Hi all, welcome to a new part of multi-threading. Today we are going to learn what are different states of thread. Okay, so let's start with uh, uh, the topic. Okay, so what is thread state? Okay, thread state is a specific period or particular situation or time of life cycle of a thread. So as you can see here in the uh, diagram that a new thread is created, a thread is in the runnable state and running state and that is it. So there are different uh, types of period, okay, or a situation which we can say in a life cycle of a thread that is called as a thread state, okay. So let's see more detail what are the different states, okay. So there are different states of a thread. Uh, so I have uh, mentioned here like new, runnable, running, block, waiting, timed waiting and terminated. There are only six different states of a thread, but running is a concept. Okay, so running is not a specific state. So if you want to get a state of a thread, you can get at any point. Okay, from a thread, but running you won't be able to get it because this is just for a concept i have included it's not any specific state because uh, be, uh and hence uh, we can't get uh, this from the thread rest all new runnable blocked waiting timed waiting and terminated are the specific states of the thread okay so we have six different thread states but including one which is concept I want to explain so that's what I have included running as well. So right now we have six seven uh, states okay and seven states we are going to learn but there are practically six states of a thread okay. So let's see what is new. Uh, thread is a new state when instance of thread is created okay. So whenever a thread is created like thread uh, let's see example thread thread instance like t1 thread thread reference is equals to new thread so here i have created a thread instance that is t1 so as soon as i create a thread this thread is in the new state okay so what jvm do basically whenever a thread gets created jvm create a stack for that thread like t1 it will be creating a stack t1 for this uh, thread right t1 thread right so this is the new state okay let's see next state which is runnable state what is this runnable state a thread is in runnable state as soon as start method gets called on the thread okay so as uh, before we saw right like we have this thread t1 thread is created okay now as soon as this uh, t1 thread we will call start on this t1 thread this thread will become into runnable state okay now what jvm will do when it becomes a runnable when we call t1 dot start so jvm uh, as soon as this thread goes into runnable state or t1 when we call t1 dot start then this thread moves into thread pool okay so uh, why we move a uh, thread into or jvm move a uh, thread into that thread pool so basically this is the place from where thread scheduler picks a thread and starts executing it but it depends on thread scheduler how thread scheduler is going to pick on the basis of priority or different criteria which is provided okay so let's uh, go to another step so running i told you this is a conceptual state this is not a proper state of a thread you can't get this state from any thread okay rest of the states you can get from a thread so when a thread goes to running state as soon as scheduler picks the thread and run method starts executing so a thread becomes running okay so that state of a thread is called as running so here also i have mentioned same thing this is the conceptual state of a thread a thread is in running state when thread starts executing run method okay 
so what is this block district okay so we can assume here we have three threads t1 t2 t3 okay now this is a synchronized block okay so let's assume uh, this t1 is executing this block okay so for executing this block t1 needs a lock okay so assume t1 is acquiring a lock and it's executing this method so until and unless t1 will not release this lock t1 and t2 can't acquire that lock or any one of them can't able to acquire that lock right so hence this t1 and t2 thread will be in the block district until and unless this t1 thread will not release the lock and any one of them will acquire the lock okay so till now what what is happening t1 is executing and t2 and t3 are in the block district because they are waiting for lock to get acquired okay for uh, that object okay okay so that's that's what is the block state which says a thread is in block state is waiting for monitor lock to enter a synchronized block method or re-enter a synchronized block or method after calling wait okay so let's see another state which is waiting now what is this waiting a thread is in waiting state due to call of one of the following method which is wait or join okay so any thread goes into waiting state when there is a call by or from or for wait or join method okay so suppose some thread has a uh, called join on uh, a t1 there is uh, some thread in t1 okay and we have called t2 dot join in t1 so t1 will be in waiting state till that t2 thread is not completed and hence it is in waiting state but this waiting state is not specific to time okay so hence this is normal waiting state we can say because there will be another step which is timed waiting okay so here waiting doesn't uh, specifies any time limit how much longer it is waiting just it tells this current thread is waiting that's all okay now there is another state which says timed waiting it is similar to waiting state but here the time limit is specified with that methods okay so for that specific uh, period of time thread will be waiting and once that time completes the thread uh, get into a running a runnable state okay or in a running state it depends again okay so terminated now what is this terminated states terminated is a state when thread completes execution okay so uh, how how does a uh, thread uh, will complete its execution so as soon as a run method gets complete thread the thread works or execution process of a uh, thread gets complete and hence it goes to terminated state you can say so as soon as run method gets complete thread it is in terminated state okay so that's all uh, was the concept of states of the thread i hope so uh, you would have uh, got what is the states of the thread so next part of multi threading or next concepts of multi threading we will be learning it into the next uh, part